Hi everybody, it's Patty, and welcome back to my channel. I think it's about time that I talk to you again about aging. I think many of you have heard me say that I'm pretty sure I'm the oldest person actually doing videos about makeup and skincare and hair uh, here on YouTube. If she's out there and she's 70, almost 71 or older, uh, please find her and send her to me. I'd love to watch her. I'd love to hear her words of wisdom too. But I, I do think, as I said, that I absolutely am the oldest person. What does 70 feel like to a 70-year-old? I probably feel the very same way you feel. Because whatever your age is, I think if you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s or 80s or 90s or, oh wow, I'm going to be 100, I know that. But I think, I think that we probably all inside aren't really sure how we're supposed to feel for our age. I think when we're little girls especially, we think about our mothers and our, our aunts and our grandmothers and our great-grandmothers and we think, oh, I'll never be that old. You're old, I'll never be that old. But the truth is, uh, as my mother told me once, there's only one alternative to growing older. And I would much rather be older than that alternative. So we're all going to be at some, at some age at some point while we're still here on this earth. And I've learned just to accept where I am. I've learned to just be the very best I can be for whatever age I am. I've said this many times. I have a 40-year-old daughter. I don't want to be, I don't, I used to say it when she was 30, but now that she's 40, I still don't want to be her. Well, there, I would like to be her in some respects <laughs> because she's a pretty neat girl or young woman. But to look at like her, to to dress like her, no, uh, I'm, that's, that's no longer me. Uh, I'm at a different stage of my life. Uh, I don't believe that I or any of you, we do not have to be our mothers and our grandmothers. Times are changing. We can with the help of all of the fillers and the surgeries and the procedures that are out there, we can pretty much look any way we want to for as long as we want to, even though our bodies are changing. Um, we can make our faces look any way. I've chosen not to do anything to my face. Uh, I've it's, it's been a long, I won't say agonizing because I haven't agonized over it. I don't agonize over anything anymore, but I have given it some thought. I can afford it, and it would be really easy to go get one of those little life lifts or, or a filler or Botox. I mean, a phone call, and I could be there to do it. And that's not to say that one morning I won't wake up and say, you know what, forget the way I felt before, I'm going to do it and go do it. But for the time being, I've decided just to be me and see what happens. Just hang in there and stick with it and continue to do everything that I can do to be me and who I feel I am inside. 
I'm a very girly, girly, girly girl, if you haven't figured that out. I like feminine things. I like not so much frilly, but I like to primp. I like to spend time at my vanity, trying new things, seeing what no longer works, what does work now that I'm having all these changes in my skin. Uh, I like doing masks. I like taking care of my skin. I like pampering myself. I take time to pamper myself. In fact, sometimes I tell my husband, I'm going to my bathroom and I'm going to primp or I'm going to pamper myself. I worked in a profession for 26 years where I was very, very fortunate to have several hundred women who reported to me. We worked together. And I would tell those women every so often, don't even wait until you feel that you need it. But every so often, I want you to have a puff day. I want you to get one of those do not disturb signs like you see on hotel room doors. And I want you to hang it on your bedroom door. And I want you to spend the day by yourself, pampering yourself. It may be taking a long bubble bath. It may be skin care, it may be a mask, it may be trying new makeup, it may be laying in bed reading a romance novel, but spend time on you. And what's so neat about it is I actually had women who did it. Their children, their husbands were not allowed in that room where they were. They knew not to bother her because pampering ourselves and taking care of ourselves is a way of rejuvenating. It's a way of reviving. It's a way of making us feel good about ourselves. I think it gives us a little more self-esteem. And when we feel good about ourselves, the way we look, we project that throughout all aspects of our lives. A good indicator of that is when you leave your house in the morning, whether it's to go to work or take the kids to school or go to the grocery store and you don't look your best, you know that you're having a bad hair day. You know that you did not put makeup on because you were gonna just run your kids to school and you run into someone you know someone you would never want to see you looking like that. So pampering ourselves and taking the time to make ourselves look good, as good as we can, pays off in so many ways, so many ways. One of my favorite TV shows, and they're no longer on except in reruns, is What Not to Wear. I love what not to wear. I love seeing those women who really don't care about their appearance be, have everything taken away from them. Every item of clothing that they own and watching the process of learning how to wear their hair, how to wear their makeup, what clothes look best on them, how they present themselves, just to see a difference. I mean, it is, it's life-changing. And we can do just little bits and pieces of that on our own every day. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of videos here on YouTube to learn how to do everything, everything. If you want to know how to put the shadow in your, the crease of your eye, if you want to know how to line your lips, if you have a lip like mine 
or lips like mine that are starting to turn under and disappear from aging. There, there are videos on how to dress. There, there are, are beauty videos and tutorials on everything you can imagine. And so we can learn uh, what we need to learn right here on YouTube. That's one of the reasons I love YouTube so much and the reason I decided to get on YouTube at this stage in my life because at 68 years old, almost 69 when I started my channel, there were, there were no women my age group doing this. And I knew there had to be women in my age group watching YouTube and wondering, why am I not represented? So that's why I decided to get on YouTube with a lot of prodding from my daughter for many years, I will say. But getting back to aging, I've said this before and I'll say it again, it's right here. It's all right here. It's in our minds. If we think that we have to look at our look like our mothers and our grandmothers and our aunts as we age, then we will. But if we think that we can be a little more youthful, we can do that too. Because the good news is, it's accepted. We're living in a time of diversity. We're so fortunate. It's sort of like everything goes out there now. Everything goes. It's mind-boggling. So what's to keep those of us who want to maintain our youth from doing it. After I retired from my last job of 26 years, I was in Sephora one day with my daughter. It was the Sephora, one of the Sephoras and a JCPenney. And I, we were looking at makeup for my daughter. And I knew more than the salesperson who was trying to help us. She excused herself, and when she came back, she had the manager of the store. And the manager asked me if I would be interested in working for Sephora. I had just retired and wanted to take a little time off and said no. Uh, I didn't think so. My daughter chimed in and said, Mom, you need to consider this. You would be good at this. So I told the manager, let me think about it. And I thought about it for a week or so, and I thought, you know, why not? So I called her. This was a Sephora that took great pride in training. And we were trained to the point that we had to had classrooms where we had to sit in a classroom and study and watch videos. And we were tested. And we had to know everything about every product. We had to know everything about the skin. We had to know about ingredients. We had to know what worked for what, what didn't work for what. We had to know when that customer was in front of us, asking her the questions so that we would be prompted to go to a particular product line for her, regardless of what it was. Something that we knew that would suit her skin. We were secret shopped. We never knew when that person who was standing in front of us was a secret shopper who was actually checking us out for the store to see how knowledgeable we were and how friendly uh, we were to the customer and how we helped. One day, I'm standing in the store, it wasn't very busy, and I noticed at one of the end caps this lady. And if you're familiar with the Sephora stores, you know at the end caps they have the makeup mirrors and all of the little paraphernalia that you need, the Q-tips and the cotton, uh, the cotton pads and makeup remover and all of those things, alcohol, all of those things, so that you can try any product that you want to try. 
So there is this lady standing at the end of the end cap, and she caught my attention. And I stood there and watched her for a second. She was very, very elderly. She was standing on her tippy toes. And when I looked down, she had on very high wedges. She had on little capri pants, a cute little form-fitting top. Her skin was bronze. Her nails were done beautifully. She had a cute little Lucille ball hairstyle. You know how Lucille wore it all curly short. It was about that color and coming up with a little ponytail or bun back there. She had on a full face of exaggerated makeup. She had false eyelashes on. So I walked over to her and asked her if there was anything I could help her with. And she said, no, I think I'm doing fine. And I said, great. I said, well, you let me know if I can help you with anything. And she was actually trying on a lip plumper. And I said, I like that lip plumper. I said, I have no lips. <laughs> I said, at the time I was like 64 or 65. And I said, I have no lips. So I need all the help I can get. I'm 64 or something like that. And she said, I'm 92. And I said, you're an awesome 92. You are awesome. I said, but then you already know that. And she smiled and said, I do. I do. And I said, well, let me know if you need me. I'll be around here. So that was that. My husband and I were shopping a few weeks ago. I was looking at some summer clothes. We were in a department store. And we passed a section where they had the whole department was clothes that our grandmothers would wear years ago. It's almost like you're young, you get to a certain age, and you cross that you cross over that threshold and all of a sudden you're supposed to have plain old shoes you know for nothing but for comfort you're supposed to dress a certain way your hair is supposed to be a certain way minimal makeup made these rules. So we, my husband and I were walking and we passed that, we were coming upon that department actually, and I said to my husband, <laughs> I probably should be shopping in there. And he said, you probably should not be shopping in there. He said, you never have to shop in that department, Patty. Never. He said, I always want you to be you. That was the nicest thing he could have said to me that day, or any day for that matter. So I'm saying to you, as you age, do what you want to do. Look the way you want to look. If you're more comfortable going to that department, then I think you should go to that department. But if you want to look at that, like that 92 or 93 year old, which by the way, is probably the way I'll look, then I think you should do that. Don't let anyone tell you how you're supposed to look. One of my pet peeves with aging is the marketplace. I don't know you, about you if you're in your 60s or 70s or older, but I get extremely frustrated when I see advertisements and magazines who talk about mature women and they're talking about women who are in their 40s, 
50s and 60s. And yes, you're starting to mature then, but they never talk about the late 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Rarely do you see anything about women in this age bracket. I've written a magazine whose whole premise is for the older woman. And yet, they do articles all the time for 30, 40, 50 year olds. Rarely is there even a 60 year old mentioned articles. They're not there. I've written them two different times and I get a little short form email that doesn't say anything about anything. In other words, 70 year olds don't matter. I don't know of any skincare company or any magazine that truly caters to this older demographic other than AARP. That's it. Do they think for one minute that we do not have disposable income? Has it ever occurred to them that we worked and we were of a generation that saved our money, that we worked and saved and made investments so that we could retire and live the good life? And we have money to spend? I don't, I don't think it ever even occurs to them. We're certainly not catered to, not in the least. I think what makes me the proudest here on YouTube is the fact that I have so many of you younger women who tell me that I'm your role model, that you make aging feel better. They feel better about the fact that they're going to get older because women like me are paving the way. There are some younger YouTube video makers here who likes the skincare companies and magazines, advertisers, do not think that women my age are relevant. But I'm finding that the majority of you, if you're watching this especially, you know that we're relevant. You know that we have something to say. You know that you can learn from us, not just about how to put makeup on and do our hair, how to dress. That's a video all, those are videos all in, uh, in and of themselves. But how to how to accept the fact that you're going to age and how to do it in the best way possible for you. I love it when those of you who are younger tell me that. I want to be just like you when I'm 70. That's what I hear all the time. I want to look like you do when I'm 70. I want to have your hair when I'm 70. Uh, that just, it makes me feel so good because hopefully I'm giving you hope. And that's why I'm here, to give you hope. There are some of you who think you'll never get old. There are some of you who will say, well, I'll do, I'll do the fillers. I'll do the surgery. I'll never look old. I don't have to look old. Well, you don't have to look old, as I said earlier. But your body will get old. Trust me. I don't care how many bicep curls and triceps you do and dips. and You're still going to get the flabby underarms. Gonna, it's going to happen. Your skin is going to loosen up. It's going to happen. You're going to get those little pudgies over your knees. It's going to happen. 
I said this in my last video, and I'll close with this. You had better accept it and accept to, to be the best at it that you can be. As I've said before, it's so important in this aging process to start when you're young and feed your soul. Figure out who you are. Figure out your priorities. Know that it's not about this. It's not about this at all. It's about what's in your heart, what's in your soul, how you see the world. Take care of yourself, stay out of the sun, eat right, exercise. As I say at this stage of my life, move as much as I can. Uh, do the basics to take care of your body, to take care of all of this. But make sure from an early age that you start feeding your soul. If you've taken care of your soul, you feel good about yourself. And aging will be a piece of cake. I think the only way aging is going to truly bother you is if you're not happy with who you are. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.